Thank you, Danny, for leading our songs in such a good way. It's nice to come in tonight and hear the four-year singers singing. That was a great encouragement. I even sat down and sang a song or two with them. Some of you don't know me. Uh, some people would tell you you're probably very blessed. Uh, but many of you do, and I'm glad to see all of you here who do know me, and I'm glad to see those of you that are new to me. And God bless this great and wonderful church that has been such an encouragement to me in all of my life. Uh, I appreciate the good prayer that was led just a moment ago and uh, the good scripture reading that was given. And it's just uh, always such a wonderful opportunity to worship in this building. And to stand back here and see these words, Sirs, we would see Jesus. Let us always see Jesus. For if we do not see Jesus, we cannot know the way to heaven. For I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come to the Father except by me, Jesus said in John 14. And verse 6. I've come to give a ministry report about our work in Romania. This year actually marks the 10th year that I've been going to Romania. I've been supporting that work for over 25 years, but I've been going for 10. Doesn't represent 10 years of full-time work there, but I've been going on a fairly regular basis for about the last seven or eight years. And I am delighted to be able to come and make a report today. Uh, let me say just a couple things on a personal note real quick, and then we'll get right on to the report and to some reading of the scripture and some other thoughts that I want to, to share with you tonight and, and get out still at a, at a pretty early time because I know people are conscious of that in the world in which we live. Um, first of all, when you walk into the house and you see so many people you know and love and so many people come up to you and give you a hug, you cannot imagine how, well, maybe you can, but to me it's a tremendously encouraging and uh, it, it's, it's a, a tremendous blessing in my life. And uh, I have a great love for a lot of churches that I've been able to serve in my life. But I have no more love for any church than for this congregation of God's people. And you have been so kind to me tonight, as well as over these past years in our work together. And it, as I've said before on many occasions, was my honor, honor to preach here for seven years. On a little more, uh, uh, I hope I don't, I don't know, I don't know if, I better not call a name because he might not be here and it might not embarrass him, but sometimes you got, uh, it might embarrass him. Sometimes you get up and you want to talk about something that's a little raw and uh, if you're not careful you get real emotional, but I think maybe my saying that will keep me from doing that. One of the things that I have learned in leaving Valley View and beginning to work in the church in uh, Romania and then helping establish the church at Grace Point and then leaving there a few months ago and then going back to Salem as their second man, their associate minister, where I no longer have pulpit responsibilities. I just have visitation and ministry responsibilities. Mike Yates does a tremendous job preaching there. Something really occurred to me, and I had felt it before, but I, it, it didn't hit me really maybe fully until I got back to Valley View. If there's one sad thing about not being here over the last seven years or eight years, if there's one sad thing about not being at Grace Point in years to come, if there's one sad thing about being gone from the Salem Church for 14 years, it is not getting to watch the little children that I have loved so very much. I went back to Salem a couple of months ago and some of the little children that were just seven and eight years old are now married and have children of their own. Some of them I hardly recognized and many of them did not remember me and I didn't remember some of them. Time has a funny way of eroding those things. This church has always been a church that loved children. I love the children here. Many of them that are younger, I don't know. I haven't even gotten to know you, and I'm not around very often. But I thank, I'm thankful for the some who came up to me here of their teenage years and others and gave me a hug today, and even though I might not remember all the names. Well, there, you've got a little good. Great to hug you all and see everybody and say hi. Uh, it's great to be a part of a great family, and that's what you are. And it's a little bit sad to think that I haven't got to watch uh, these kids 
but that's just a part of ministry and work in this world. And we're going to a place someday called heaven. And when we get there, there's not going to be any more uh, separation. There's not going to be any more uh, work to do that, like we have to do in this world. And we're going to be together forever and ever. And I think that will be a tremendous blessing. Tonight I want to begin by reading a passage of Scripture in the Thessalonian letter. And when I read this passage of Scripture, I think of this church. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6, And you, you brethren at Thessalonica, became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you were in examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. What a tremendously powerful example this church has been in this area in its short history for positive, for good, and for the gospel. And may it ever be so. And then verse 8, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith that God were to spread abroad so that we need not speak anything. You have supported so many wonderful works, matured and grown as a church. We remember the early days in the old building that's now bulldozed down where uh, we were sometimes fearful that we would even be able to make payroll, much less pay the rent. But God quickly showed us that we had not enough faith and blessed us to great things. But you know, since that time, you're long past all of that. And now I hear about the people you support and help and work in the mission field around the world. From you sounded out the word of the Lord. Not only in Craighead County, not only in Arkansas, but in places thousands and thousands of miles from here. And in that sense, I really think this is a church much like the church at Thessalonica. I'll now talk to you about some of the things I want to talk to you about about my ministry, and then I'll close with a verse or two when we get to the end of the lesson uh, tonight. I've been in a gospel meeting this past week, and so my throat is very raspy, and uh, I do apologize for that, but uh, it won't stop me from saying the things I want to say, I hope. Uh, when you leave tonight... Uh, the round table is uh, crowded with lots of activities and good activities, but mixed in among it is just mine for the night. Uh, you'll find a white card that says David Gibson Evangelistic Ministries. And if you would like to get information about my ministry, just fill that card out and drop it in the little box that has a, a cut in the top of the blue top. And I'll add you to the mailing list. So we certainly prefer that you give us an email address so that we don't have to use a stamp when we make reports. Uh, but if you don't have an email address, we'll be glad to, to send you reports concerning the ministry. Also, if you're disposed to make a contribution, I didn't come to ask for that tonight, but I did. If you're so disposed to do that, uh, be sure and make it to the Valley View Church of Christ and drop it in that same blue top box that has my name on it and my ministry name on it uh, out in the foyer. Uh, let's begin, Paul. My ministry has been under the oversight of the Valley View Church of Christ from day one, and it still is. And I'm thankful for the elders here, and I'm thankful for the mission committee that have encouraged me and supported me along the way. Uh, you have helped me financially with prayers, with encouragement as a congregation, and many of you as individual members of this church. And for that, I'm truly thankful on behalf of the people of Romania. Over the past several years from the church contribution, you have helped $300 a month into the work fund, not my personal support, but into the work fund in Romania. And that's where the money has been spent that you have helped me with over these last several years. And uh, I'm thankful for that. All right. I don't have 100 slides tonight. My wife said, you've been showing too many slides. Cut it down. So I did what I should do. I listened and I cut it down. My work's really in four parts. Uh, it's evolved over time. You say, well, what, 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 what's that mean? It's, everybody's work evolves over time. This church's work's evolved over time. It should. Some things work. We keep doing them. Sometimes they quit working. We try to do something else. 
Sometimes someone leads in the work. They quit leading. Someone else comes to lead. We continue on with the work of God. My work is in four basic parts over the last five or six years. And that has not changed a great deal. I want to tell you about it. First of all, I work in the city of Cluj in Romania. A city of about 400,000 people, 350 to 400, depending on whether students are there. It's a university city. Tremendous prospect, but a very difficult work. But one that is better than it has ever been, in my judgment. This is also the work that Ted Knight has really, by his own sweat and blood, kept alive in the early days of that work after their first missionaries went home. And Ted, I'll introduce you to their preacher and his wife in just a minute in Cluj. And Ted still raises all the financial support for the preacher and his wife that I'm going to show you. Well, that's a picture of a bunch of our young kids. Uh, I've tried to take all the pictures out that I've ever showed before, except maybe this one and one more. This is a picture of our young, younger kids. We have some teenagers that are a little older. This is last Christmas, and they're carrying gifts uh, to people who are in need in the community as well as to the nursing home. And you'll see at the end a little girl, Ariana, standing by herself with a bunch of groceries around her. And that's just before they get ready to load them in baskets and to carry those out to needy families in the community. A lot of our work we've tried to dovetail together. And isn't that what we do in local work? I think it is. I think the elders and the deacons try to work together, even though sometimes they may have different aspects of their work and the church tries to pull together as a whole. Well, you'll see throughout this report that that's exactly what we've tried to do in the churches that we work with. I'm very proud of those young people right there. Uh, many of them, when I first started reporting to you, I told you that most of our young people's parents had never darkened the door of the Church of Christ and didn't go to any church at all. Most of these kids that you're seeing in that picture, their parents come to church now and for that we are thankful there is dragos and serena and this is where a little dovetailing will begin in case you're counting i've got about 19 or 20 slides so you figure your way through it pretty easy that's dragos and serena they've been preaching at kluge for as long as i've been going this is the family that ted knight found to go there and to work with them on a regular basis and they were one of the earliest churches in romania to actually have a romanian preacher and his wife work in the congregation they're standing in front of our most recent Northern Romania Bible School training program, the sign, and that's always conducted in the city of Cluj, but I'll tell you more about that in a moment. They have three lovely children, three daughters, and they are hard workers in the kingdom. As in the case of me and my wife, so it is with Serena and Dragos. Serena's a lot better worker than Dragos is, but he comes along and preaches and does the best he can, and his wife fills in the back gaps to keep him going. Really a great Christian couple. Uh, and I could have brought dozens of pictures to show you the church. The church has lost a couple of people in death, but they've had two or three baptisms in the last couple of years. And they've had some families who have come to start worship with them, worshiping with them on a regular basis. And they were there in my last trip, which I returned from uh, on September the 13th. Arad is a church that we just started working with about three years ago. I've told you the story about some difficult things that happened there when their missionary went home. I won't repeat those stories. The church had fallen to where it was nearly, it had one of the best church buildings, except for the one in Bucharest, in all of Romania. But the church was on the verge of extinction because no one had come to help them. And they'd been calling on me and asking me to come. And I had been resisting. I thought it can't really be that bad. But I went and it was pretty bad. And this is the church where we finish the upstairs and we uh, into some apartments for American workers to work in. Last year, this is uh, Vasily Konia. Uh, he was baptized into Christ in about April, uh, maybe maybe early May. Uh, that's a big thing for them because they don't have a lot of baptisms. Uh, this young man had heard me preach uh, in early April when I had gone for Lads to Leaders. He's not extremely young man. He's probably in his late 20s or early 30s. And uh, he told uh, the man who teaches there and kind of helps keep the church running, although he's not a preacher by his own admission, uh, he told him, he said, I, I heard what Brother David said in the sermon about baptism and who should be baptized. And he said... I haven't done that. I need to do that. 
And a couple weeks after I went home, he made it that known, and he was baptized by Adonel. Adonel's a man and his son, who I'll show you in a minute, who go to this church once a month and preach now. For over seven years, they had no one preaching. They read a scripture, they took the Lord's Supper, and sometimes they sang a song or two if they had anybody to start it, and they went home. But we've been trying to help find some Romanians to preach there, and Adonel is one of the most faithful Romanians I know of. And he gets in his car one Sunday a month and drives about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes to get to the church at a rod, and he preaches there. And then his son goes and preaches there also. Adonel is baptizing Vasily into Christ. Now, there's more to it than that. Vasily is the grandson-in-law of uh, one of the elderly ladies who stayed faithful in the church, a widow. When they were down to three or four people, she stayed faithful, Miss Anna Lutza, and uh, uh, Vasily married one of her granddaughters. None of them were coming to church except Anna Lutza. Now he's coming, his wife, her granddaughter's coming, her other granddaughter's coming, her grandson is coming, and her other daughter is, and one of her daughters is coming. And so there's six or seven people that on an average Sunday are in the assembly in the church at Arad, where before there was only one of those six or seven people. We're excited about that. Uh, this is the man who I said is sort of the caretaker of the church. Uh, he's a smart Bible man, but he, he doesn't have confidence in public speaking at all. Uh, his name is Christy Lunga. He is also one of the men who stayed faithful to the church. I've shown you pictures of him before. I don't have one tonight. Uh, when things just get horrible and the church is about to die and you're trying to hold it together and finally someone comes from America and says, I'll try to help you what I can. About three months after that, his wife came in and said, I've met a man at work and I'm leaving you and I'm taking our son. And she never came back. So they divorced. And he was pretty low. The woman on the right is Krista. Krista and he married about four or five months ago, maybe six months ago. I don't know the exact time frame. But somewhere in the last year they married. Krista is from an Orthodox background. But she is as supportive of the work as she could be. And there we are engaged in a Bible study this summer in the World English Institute, which went on for a solid month. And I am really proud of this lady. I'm not the judge of anybody's condition. Uh, I think she has much to learn, but I think she is wanting the church to grow. She said, we need to set up a Facebook page. So she said, I said, I can't help you on that. Y'all know how I am by tech. I said, I can't help you on that. Uh, she set it up. Uh, she said, this place is filthy. Hadn't had a cleaning in about 10 years since the missionary went home. It's spotless now. You wouldn't be afraid to eat off the floor, wooden though they are. And uh, she started having a little class for the little children, where there's only two or three, where they had none. I'm really excited about Krista. And if indeed she needs to be immersed into Christ, I'm not the judge. If she does, I think she will be fairly shortly. Uh, here is Krista with a man she invited from her work, and he came. Uh, he doesn't go to church anywhere, and he studied for four straight weeks with us in the World English Institute this summer. The lady on, to the left, I think left is still left for you. Yeah, the lady to the left is Miss Dana Nelson. She's 73 years old from Central California, and the last 20 years she's been going to Albania. She knows Spencer and has worked with Spencer before in Albania. And this year she was persuaded to come and help us in our World English Institute in Arad. And she came and she stayed and she taught for four weeks and then she got on a plane and went to Albania and taught for two more weeks and then she went back to California. Uh, if your health is good, you're never too old to be a good worker in the kingdom of God. And Miss Dana was a great, great encouragement to me and to this man who was her student. He has visited the church several times since.
All right, come on. What do we do this summer? Well, besides going there to preach on every mission trip I went this year to the city of Arad and many other things we did with the young people and, and benevolence projects, the biggest thing we did this summer was hold a World English Institute, that's what WEI stands for, campaign, from June 15th, excuse me, June 18th to July 15th for four weeks. We had uh, seven teachers who stayed in the upstairs apartment that we had uh, uh, remodeled and made livable so they wouldn't have to have hotels. And we had 43, if I can read that right, yeah, 43 Romanian students uh, who studied with us for a four-week period of time. Now, they didn't all complete the school. They had to miss some days, but many of them did complete the school, and we have a trove of prospects based on that school in June, and some of those people are indeed visiting the church. WEI is a campaign where we advertise in the paper and we say, would you like to learn English? We don't deceive people. We say, if you will come to this address, to the Church of Christ in Arad, give the address. We will teach you English one day a week uh, for uh, four weeks, uh, excuse me, five days a week, one hour a day for four weeks. And that's exactly what we did uh, with those people who came. Now, we also tell them in the newspaper article, your textbook will be the Bible. So they know coming in that their textbook, it's not one of those bait and switch deals. Come study English. Oh, by the way, here's the Bible. They know coming in what they're going to be studying out of. And some of them are just there for the English. When we're through with four weeks, they say, thank you for my diploma. I learned a lot of English. Uh, you haven't changed my mind about anything. But uh, some of those people are showing great interest in the church. So, those are the two churches I work with in terms of individual work. The church in Kluge and the church in Arad. Arad's a city of about 167,000 people near the Hungarian border. Then there are two national programs we've established. The first one is the Northern Romania Bible School because I believe in teaching Romanians to teach Romanians. There's going to be a day when Joel Inman, by the way, Joel and I were returning from a Bible school that he teaches in the South, similar to the one I've established in the North. And we didn't either one know we were going to be on the same plane, but we were, and we got to Memphis at the same time. And it was great to see Joel when I got there. Joel, God bless you and the work you're doing in the churches in Dolge and Arges and the work there. The Northern Romania Bible School is, a, is the best attempt I know to help Romanians teach themselves because what's going to happen when David Gibson's too old to go anymore or dead? What's going to happen when Harvey Starling is too old to go anymore or dead? What's going to happen when Ted Knight is too old to go anymore or dead? Are we just going to lose these churches we've invested so much in? Or will there be new people arise? And that's what I'm looking for. Or even even better, the very best scenario, when you went to searching for a new preacher here and finally found Brother Spencer, uh, you didn't interview many Romanians. I predict the only people you interviewed were Americans. We need Romanians to take hold of the preaching, Romanians to take hold of, of, of the giving, Romanians to take hold of the ministries and programs. And slowly but surely, we're working to that end. That's this year's picture. Uh, I don't know how good your eyesight is. Can anybody tell me the name of that guy right there? You know him. Nope. You gotta look closer. I gotta admit, he's he's kind of got a round face like Greg Ho. By the way, pray for Greg. Greg's mother and father have both been in the hospital all week. I think his father got dismissed yesterday, but his mother's been in intensive care. Can it, no one can get that? He's been in this building dozens of times. I'm gonna help you a little bit. It must be small print. He's from Paragool. He's from Center Hill. No, it's not Michael Meredith. <laughs> David Lawrence. David Lawrence. He went and taught in our school this year and did a fabulous job. A fabulous job in teaching in our Northern Romania. Northern Romania Bible School, we bring people in. This year we had 22 adults. Uh, there they are in the picture, most of them. We may be missing one or two because you can't get everybody together for any picture anywhere. But we had 22 students, full-time students and three part-time students. These are people who took off from their jobs, who took off from their vacation or whatever 
whatever they did. And they came and they stayed in our school for a solid week. And they went to school every morning at 8 o'clock. They stayed in school with David Lawrence and uh, Darren Schroeder from Godly, Texas all day long until 4 o'clock. Then they had a break. Then they came back at 7 and I taught them on the work of the Holy Spirit. And then we went out in the community until it was pitch dark and we handed out invitations. And then at the end of the week we had a one night seminar and we had about 10 or 15 non-members and three people who had never been in the Church of Christ before that I know of who came to that seminar on that night. So that's some of the things that we do in the Northern Romania Bible School. This is not a Bible school for children, but children are there. These are the children of some of the people you just saw. And uh, I said, you guys get in front of the picture. And, and by the way, Serena doesn't come to the school. She teaches these children all week long in a back room. So we, we try to maximize our efforts when we go. Oh, the last thing that I do is Lads to Leaders Romania. Uh, I've had tremendous help from so many churches, including you. Uh, I've had tremendous help uh, uh, from so many individuals who have helped to make this possible. Uh, Lads to Leaders Romania is, is a national program. And for the first time that I can remember, it's grown over the last five years. And last year, I believe we had representatives from every Church of Christ in Romania, except for one church, sent kids. And these kids do as good a job as American churches do, the best of them, in preparing themselves for the Lads to Leaders Convention, which is always uh, at Orthodox Easter time because the kids are off school. Uh, their, their event lasts for four days, where here I think it lasts for maybe three days. But they, they have to prepare themselves to go. And uh, this is a group of kids... Uh, you probably had some of the adults in your classes uh, this year, Joel, from Rome Volcha. Uh, these kids had never come before. And I wish the, the, the theme this year was on the, the uh, Lord's Supper, uh, the, the sacrifice of Christ at Calvary. And they did an abstract Picasso type banner. That's their banner. Uh, just outstanding and unbelievable work. In fact, I think I'll go back to that one when it's over, Paul, and just leave it on the screen and let people come up closer who might want to look at it. Those three girls were communicating, partaking of the Lord's Supper. This is Laura Cook. I'm not in the room at this time because when ladies sing or ladies speak, there are no men in the room. But Laura Cook uh, is one of our most accomplished young ladies, and uh, she is uh, uh, engaged in both speech and song leading. And uh, I'm really, really super proud of Laura. Uh, we need puppets. I imagine the puppeteers are back there in the back with the children. But we need puppets. And so if you, I know how churches work. They start puppet programs and they use puppets a year or two. And then they get kind of old and worn out. Uh, we'll take the old and worn out puppets if y'all have any at Valley View. And you can communicate that to Charlotte or to whoever's in charge of your puppet teams. We need puppets. But that's really been growing. The first year, we just had one little old puppet team of two or three kids. This year, we had five puppet teams and most of them had four or five kids. I've only included one picture. This, this church had never participated before, the church in Sibiu. There's the group of kids, a few adults sprinkled in there. Once again, I can't get all the kids together, but our best estimate is somewhere around 95 kids and around 25 to 30 adults. And uh, that's what we've pretty close to been running, maybe a little more this year than we have the last year or two, or maybe just about the same. It's really kind of hard to tell. But these kids kids all uh, memorize scripture. Uh, over 50 of these kids uh, won an award for scripture memorization. All these kids participated in service projects. And I know in the church in Cluj, it has energized our young people. It caused some of those parents to want to be a part of the church too because over three or four years, they don't just get up and go to the convention in April when I go. They're making those baskets of food and going to the nursing home and, and engaging in service projects projects in their uh, community.
community to, and people have taken note of that over the last three or four years and there's the little girl standing around the food that's probably a picture I might have included before it's about two years old and uh, she's getting ready for the other kids to come in and put that in baskets or sacks and carry it out much as you would do on pack a sack we still haven't we still haven't pack a sack Danny good good uh, that's what they're getting ready to do this is the last picture except the one you're going to have to look at of me. I know, I know my good friend Randy Tyler. I mean, not Randy Tyler. He's from, that's another thing that happens when you're old and you've preached a lot of places. Randy Tyler's a deacon up at Salem. But uh, that Randy right over there, Randy Simpkins, I told him 19 or 20 and he's had that left hand going, marking down every time I go through a slide so he knows I'm right near the end. You know people make fun of you in that left hand, don't you, Randy? I tell you, you've done a lot of good with that left hand. By the way, Randy was one of the first teachers in the first Northern Romania Bible school we ever had and did a fine job. This is Bogdan, I have a hard time saying some of their last name, Kurikos. Remember the man that was baptizing the guy a while ago? That's his daddy, Adonel. And this is Bogdan. Bogdan was in our first Lads to Leaders program. Bogdan came to every, he was in your class, came to every uh, Northern Romania Bible school for the last seven years until two years ago when he got in college and he just could not come because he had college studies. And he's also the young man that now gets in the car and goes with his dad or sometimes takes to train and goes by himself once a month to preach in the city of Arad where they've not had anybody to preach to them for five years except when I would go. And don't smart off Randy and say they didn't have anybody much then either. So don't, don't do that, please. I'm really proud of Bogdan. Uh, this is an example of what happens when you involve kids both here and over there in activities where they learn the Bible, where they are mentored, where they are loved, where they are encouraged, and where their talents are allowed to blossom. And Bogdan is one of the most outstanding young men we have in Romania, and I am so very thankful for him. You've seen this picture before, but that means I'm at the end. I guess I better stay behind this microphone because my voice is raspy and I don't want to come down there and not be heard. What are we doing? The same thing that I've been doing for the whole 10 years I've been going. Preaching the gospel, working to establish new congregations. I wish I had more to report than one, but one is better than none. Strengthening Christians and churches. You just can't imagine the weakened condition these brethren found themselves in when the first generation of missionaries went home. This came, they brought American money, they established uh, churches, they stayed five, six, seven, eight, nine years, and then for any number of reasons, they went home. As many of you in the early days went to the church at Bucharest. Where many, much, much was spent to build the building in excess of a million U.S. dollars in the early 90s. Some of it coming from churches in this area. Some of you were serving as elders in churches in this area where that money came from. A report came about six months ago that they had, were averaging between 12 and 15 on Sunday morning. Now I'm thankful that... A man who was not working with them, who's the, an American who had married a Romanian and started a house church, said, I'll come back and help. And he's gathered up, and now they're having in the 40s and 50s again. It's not the 400 they were having. But that repeated itself all over Romania because there was an excitement in those early days coming out of communism. And there was a great need because they didn't have any bread on the shelves. And if you came with a dollar for them, they, if you don't have anything to eat tonight... You know, what's a dollar mean to you? It means a whole bunch if you don't have anything to eat tonight. And in the early days of the establishment of the church in Romania, most of those people had lost their jobs. There were no new jobs. Communism had shut down and was transitioning to capitalism. And it's been a slow grind. But it's better. 
And then we're trying to strengthen those churches, one-to-one -one Bible studies. And I've always emphasized, I haven't talked much about it tonight other than the Lads to Leaders program we established. Uh, working every time I go, I work with young people, uh, encourage them to have youth rallies, put on the youth rallies, encourage them to bring their friends in usually two churches every time I go, the two churches I work with. So this is what I do. I work in Cluj. I work in Arad. I've established, we've established the Northern Romania Bible School to teach adults the Bible better and evangelism. And we've established Lads to Leaders Romania to help kids in every congregation in Romania to be active and a part of the work of the Lord when they grow up. And I can see the development in these young people over and over and over again. Thank you for listening tonight. Uh, I think... I think I'm supposed to be meeting with the missions committee tonight. I don't know. Is that right, Gary? Yeah. If anybody has a question, you can either come and ask it, I'll be glad to answer it, or you can give it to Gary, and he will be glad to ask me that question. Uh, I want to conclude with a reading from another place in Scripture. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter... 5 and beginning in verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. In Christ is the key here. If you're in Christ, everything old is gone, washed away in the blood of the Lamb, and everything is new as you continue to walk in the light, and the blood of His Son, Jesus, continually cleanses you from all unrighteousness. So says 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. And then the Bible says, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. I realize he's talking specifically here about the apostles and the ministry they were engaged in in its immediate context, but there is a secondary application here. And that secondary application is there are no apostles to carry the gospel to anyone anymore. And if we're going to fulfill the Great Commission, you and I will do it. And you say, I can't go. You help me go. You help other people to go. Some of you do go. Thank you. Not just on behalf of the work I try to engage in, but on behalf of the work all of them try to engage in. We are about the increase. Do we have a message worth hearing? If we don't have a message worth hearing, I'm with Peter. I go fishing. But if we've got a message worth hearing, that Jesus died to establish His church, and that we can be members of it by obedience to the gospel, and that we can live a better life and die and go to heaven someday, then the word or ministry of reconciliation is not only committed unto those of olden times, but it's committed unto us also. And we ought to be anxious to hear it and anxious to preach it. And then the wonderful news in verse 21. I'll skip two verses and close. What time is it, Danny? I don't have a watch. Anybody got a watch in this church? Anybody? I'm so thankful Spencer hadn't talked y'all into putting up a clock. I know he's, he's back there. Y'all can laugh a little. He ain't going to crawl under the pew. What time is it? What? I can't hear and I can't see, but anyway, we're trying. For he hath made him, verse 21, for he, God, hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You want to be righteous as God is righteous? You get in Christ. Are you in Christ tonight? If you're not, you're trying to be righteous in your own Lord. Pharisees lost that night. If you will too.